Today is our final week of the series, and it's being presented by HackMGM. Throughout these weeks, we've discussed several aspects of how we can leverage data within Montgomery. We've spoken about the variety of tools that can be used, the various data sets that are available, the opportunities offered by PEO BES, and also how to infuse innovation and design thinking into community practices and also into government organizations. All of these facets will enable us to build a more diverse economy. I'm pleased to welcome today's speaker from HackMGM, Bryant Noel. Bryant and I have shared the stage and workspace quite often, as he's absolutely one of the smartest guys that I know. He has a passion for Montgomery, our tech ecosystem, and growing the local tech economy. Today, he's going to touch on how we can use all that we've spoken about to grow Montgomery's tech ecosystem but he's gonna build upon previous sessions that we've had within this webinar series and really talk about community building for the community that we love and live in. Please welcome Bryant Noel. Welcome everybody, uh, thank you for attending. I'm gonna be kicking off a conversation around HackMGM and that we are restarting it. So give me just a moment to get the slides up and running on this. Going to be having some technical difficulties with the slides. I'm going to go ahead and do this a bit more free form. So thank you all for attending. Hack and GM will be kicking back off at the beginning of next month. I wanted to talk a little bit about what went well previously and what uh, didn't go as well and what we're going to change up in the future. What went well previously um, with HackMGM is that we did have a lot of community engagement, and I really want to focus on that community engagement for the next iteration as well. What we were able to do is continue to grow communications across the education initiatives and across the industry and across the military and continue to engage with those different individuals. So continuing in that vein, I want collaboration and communication to be the main focus of the, of, of the HackMGM project. Really, whenever we're talking about um, what we want to engage on moving forward in that way, uh, we should be pre presenting it not so much on the idea of products delivered, but on the idea of collaborations and experiences shared. So I'm going to take a brief pause and try one more time to get these slides to work. Give me just a moment. So I able to get an older version of it to work. We'll uh, go a little bit more ad lib on that moving forward. So Hack and GM. Um, so some of the uh, things that we wanted to do differently coming up is specifically targeting lean coffee discussions and um, mob programming. Um, in addition to what we had done previously with specialty presentations. So we had. Um, Previously had a lot of specialty presentations where individuals would come and speak on things and pitch projects. We're trying to back away from that conversation and more importantly discuss a more collaborative approach, hence the Lean Coffee and Mob Programming approaches. So for the Lean Coffees, which we will be um, presenting here at the end of this conversation where I kick this off, uh, we'll, be, we'll be trying one out. You establish a just-in-time agenda. So instead of having a preset agenda and uh, having the attendees um, attend based on that, instead you have your attendees collaboratively build your agenda when it is most important to have it uh, just prior to starting the conversation. So we plan to host those once a month on the first Saturday uh, to have everybody get together and discuss these things. So you'll iteratively discuss each of those prioritized themes. Um, Looking at mob programming, we are hoping to do that also once a month. And what that looks like is with a mob programming session, you try to get everybody that is smart on a problem in a room and get them all to tackle the problem simultaneously. So the intention will be to find a problem that is small enough to solve in a single session. This is contrary to what we had done previously, where we would try to pick up entire projects and try to push forward with a, with a volunteer staff to accomplish these projects. Instead of trying to prioritize the product, we are trying to prioritize the people and the execution and learning that's going to happen within those projects. Uh, the next section will be specialty presentations, which we would like to do 
on an ad hoc schedule as needed. And we'd really like to discuss on a variety of different tech themes. And we really encourage anybody that wants to present on these themes to please put them in chat or communicate them in our Slack channel, which you'll see here in just a few moments. So one of those themes that we'd like to go over are agile in general, software development, information assurance, DevOps, and many other subject areas really around the tech scene and the community and as a whole. Um, there's many other community organizations within the area and I do encourage that you get with them and continue to coordinate on that progress uh, that they've been having. So uh, for instance, I-85 Corridor, Tech MGM, uh, Facebook Developer Circles, all of those are also available for continued uh, growth within the, the community. Um, how would you like to get involved? Well, you can join our Slack group, which will have all of these different pieces and parts. And additionally, we'll be having a Trello board set up and many other things. Um, I'm going to move into attempting to run a Lean Coffee here in just a moment. So I'll be sharing out a link with everybody and you should be able to join that link here in just a moment. So one second, please. So if everybody could please go to the link that I shared in chat. Um, and if you have any specific questions that you would like to have addressed, please put them in chat as well. What we're going to do is walk through this and iteratively build a conversation around questions that individuals may have surrounding HackMGM or the community as a whole and have a more collaborative conversation. So please go to the link attached and go ahead and start putting cards, uh, little sticky notes on the backlog and write down any idea you'd like to discuss. And then we're going to give everybody about five minutes to work through that. And then we will talk about each of these prioritized items after we vote on them. All right, that'll, that'll wrap up the time that we have set aside for creating ideas. Now we're going to vote on the ones that we want to talk about and hear more about, and then we'll discuss them together. So I'll go ahead and start a voting session for everybody that is in this and everybody can have, uh, have three votes. So vote on anything that you would like to vote on. We've got a few seconds left for this um, and it looks like the individuals that are on the board have voted at this point. So we'll go ahead and end this voting session so that we can see what we wanted to talk about. So it looks like Agile and Scrum training is going to be the first conversation that we want to pick up. So uh, who wants to kick that one off and ask any questions around it? Or is it just a conversation around is Agile and Scrum training going to be made available? Right. I will kick it off. So Agile and Scrum training, um, looking forward to continuing to engage with various members inside of the team on this talking uh, probably more around a Kanban style approach and specialty presentations for Agile and Scrum training. I hope to be hosting a variety of Scrum trainings in person. So I want to be doing those routinely. Um, I also want those to be a major theme whenever we do our Lean Coffees in the future. So that whenever people present cards like we're doing now on this board, I can share my screen, that'll probably make this easier. So whenever people see these boards with these various cards on them, we can continue to have conversations around Agile as a major theme. Uh, today, the major theme was really HackMGM and the community as a whole. But in future, we'll probably try to prioritize individual themes for each of the sessions that we have and provide lots of context around what that looks like coming up. So as far as training goes, we'll be providing more conversations than specific trainings. Whenever we do give specialty presentations, however, those will be more targeted toward the experiences that an individual should have. For instance, I know that I'll be giving one on product ownership, uh, performing as a scrum master and performing as a developer on the various scrum teams. So addressing all of the three roles that you can have inside of a scrum team. Um, other questions on this one? So, so the, the intent is for this to be collaborative. So if anybody else has thoughts on this, please jump in and provide more information. Any questions, comments, recommendations, anything. If not, we'll move on to the next one.
So how to build community. As I said at the beginning of this, uh, this conversation, I really wanted it to be um, targeted on collaboration and the people more than on the product and the process. I, I, hold the, I hold those to be more valuable. So how do we pursue building community inside of Hack and GM? Uh, through deliberate collaboration with all of those various different community partners and pursuit with them, but also through when we do get together, I don't want it to be a one-way conversation. I, I want everybody to participate in these conversations and to continue to push forward this dialogue, um, not so much a lecture. So the, the best way that I've seen to instruct and to learn with individuals is to have everyone become involved with the conversation. So that's, that's the, the premise behind performing these as lean coffees versus performing these as presentations. That's the premise behind doing mob programming, where we have, instead of just one person writing code, we all will write code together collaboratively. Um, the expectation for that is that when you have all of the people doing the right thing at the right time, you'll get it far better executed than otherwise. Um, an interesting example of that, and I'm kind of moving into mob programming here, but an interesting example of that is with, uh, think of like football coaching. You routinely wouldn't send the quarterback out one day to throw all of his, uh, all of his throws, and then the next day without the quarterback, send the receivers out to pretend to catch them. Um, you really need the whole team out there to execute as a unit because at the end of the day, what you are doing isn't just one person, but is it is instead the entire team. And, and that's the intention behind mob programming too, is that the entire team is involved from ground one and throughout the entire development process uh, collaboratively. Um, so we really want to target both of those things because of the collaboration that it brings throughout the teams and with the individuals involved. We also want to continue to engage on community projects. We also want to continue to engage on uh, requests for help in any way. And of course, we don't want to stop anyone individually from supporting uh, their own projects or even presenting those as software development efforts that can be performed in mob programming. So when you're doing mob programming, you want to tackle a single problem. And that can be anything that somebody brings to the group, or it can be targeted uh, free and open source software. Just a question. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. This is Ken Heitkamp. Ken Heitkamp. I want to back on the community. Some of that is about building, building community, right, and building and increasing participation. Is, is that correct? correct? That is correct. Yes, sir. You know, so, you, know, you know, one part of that could be if some of that was focused on, um, probably, and this could actually include mob programming, if some of that activity was focused on some objective result that uh, that people would be interested in achieving that result for either for 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 the community or part of the community um, uh, that could build some some excitement some passion some uh, for for participation uh, I think that would have to be bounded by you know we, we're going to do this in this period of time but but that's, you know, that, that when, I, when I selected that one, that's what I was thinking about. Yes, sir. That's, that's absolutely the expectation. We want people to feel passionate about both the conversations that are being had and the work that is being performed. And uh, again, the work that's being performed isn't the, isn't the actual goal. Um, uh, yes, it's going to be wonderful if we are able to implement uh, new source code that works. More importantly, it's going to be wonderful if we can get everybody collaborating together to try to make source code that works. Um, and in that process, you will get better and better at it, and you will eventually be producing things that are significant and meaningful. But the journey's the portion that's worth it. Uh, the end product is a byproduct of that journey and that growth in the community and that continued collaboration and learning experience. So that, that's the target, is that we want to continue to learn and grow and experiment with each other. But that that in project might help provide the glue that holds that together during the journey. Yes, sir. That's absolutely correct. Is there more on how to build community? If not, we will move on to free and open source hey, software. Hey, Brian, real quick, um, just an idea that popped into my head while you guys were talking is 
if uh, we were to set up like a competition or some kind of internship program where we could use Bespin to have some kind of problem that needs to be solved or code that needs to be developed and host like a competition to see if somebody in the local community could develop it or, you know, in turn with Bespin as like a partnership? No, absolutely. Um, we have a near limitless number of opportunities that we could pursue in that way. So that kind of rolls back into um, HackMGM supported community projects, but we can certainly talk about it and how you build community, um, specifically in integration with Bespin and how that, uh, how that looks moving forward. Um, so as, as a disclosure, uh, as a disclaimer, I do work at Bespin. I work with uh, Fearless and we are contracted to work at Bespin. So I am one of the, uh, the Agile Coaches and Scrum Masters there. Um, and we, we do these Lean Coffees there as well as a way to uh, continue to build communities of practice and growth inside of that community also. Um, one of the things that would be really beneficial uh, in my mind is to continue to grow that connection between the military and between the community as a whole. Um, not just Hack MGM, but also Tech MGM and I-85 Corridor and all of the other groups. So I certainly think that there's huge opportunities for that kind of a project to, to exist. And I think that that's something we should certainly follow up on. Thanks. Do we, do we know the process to actually get that moving or um, get that started? Uh, yes, sir. So we, uh, we have that Slack group. Um, I would probably join that Slack group and start conversations. But you've already started the process just by uh, just by letting myself know, and we'll go from there. Cool. Thanks, Brian. Thank you. Uh, moving on to free and open source software target. So one of the things that we really liked to pursue, and that I would hope we would continue to be able to pursue inside of HackMGM, is a target of open source software. We liked the idea of what we developed to be available both to our community and to larger communities. Um, it's also going to be simpler to find problems that are consumable in a meaningful way with mob programming if we target open source software because their repos are available and we'll be able to more rapidly find small uh, digestible amounts of work that can be executed on at a single time. So those are kind of my expectations for why we would target free and open source uh, before we would target um, other ventures. Are there questions on this one? Any other thoughts? I can talk a bit more on it. Whenever we talk about uh, free and open source software, one of the concerns that routinely comes up is licensing and uh, copyleft licensing and how that um, can be problematic whenever you start to include uh, free and open source solutions into um, what would otherwise be a paid solution. So Cox, commercial off the shelf or something. What you end up with is many of these, uh, uh, for instance, GPL licenses, uh, the new project uh, licenses. Um, whenever you start doing those, they have stipulations and clauses in them that say, if you use their free software, you don't have to pay for it, but your software then needs to be also free and available. So, it's, it's viral in that way. And that if you start to use these pieces of free and open source software in your uh, systems and code, all of your systems and code need to eventually come to that level as well. So there are certainly uh, positives and negatives to targeting uh, free and open source software. Um, and it's going to be, of course, project by project basis, uh, task by task basis as to which project we're working on and which applicable license is in place. Is there anything unique in there for government? There's also, given that there's a lot of state, local, and federal government here, is there anything unique for the for those governments? I presume that would be considered to be free if the government did it, but I don't know if from an industry perspective, and I, I'm not asking for an answer here, but that's uh, a side of it that may be addressed in a later session. No, absolutely. I think that that's really important to discuss is how does free and open source software apply to the, the military and the government as well? And from my understanding, it applies in the same way as it does to, to everyone else. Um, you are allowed to execute with deployments of these applications, but whenever you start to pull in portions of the source code into your own projects, 
then it starts to get uh, complicated. And uh, from my understanding, the licensing at that point would require that those other software pieces that you are building on top of it also be open source and available. Um, so for instance, we use uh, rail servers, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, and of course it is open and available as well. Now, we do pay for those. We pay for those because we pay for support for those, not because we're paying for the software itself, from my understanding. And what that means is, is that we can use uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux rail servers because we are not altering the way that it behaves. So we, we are still using the exact out of the box solution for that. Now, if we were trying to build our own um, uh, city of Montgomery uh, enterprise Linux system, and we wanted to extend it on top of uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, the issue would become ours would need to be open source as well, even if we rebranded a significant portion of it because we had taken the, the components from something that already was. So that, that's one of the intentions. And I'm, I'm not actually sure of the licensing on uh, Rail. Um, I, would, I would believe it's probably GPL, but if it's not, then maybe it's MIT, at which point there's other concerns in there. But that's, that's a conversation for, <laughs> for further down the line. That can definitely be one of the, one of the tech talks. Any other questions on free and open source? So let's move on to community projects and uh, gonna group um, Hack and GM supported community projects in there with it. Uh, so I know that uh, this ties in really well with what Jason was saying just a few moments ago. Um, he, he had an idea for a project. How does he pursue presenting those ideas toward, toward Hack and GM and to the larger community? So th the short answer is, feel free to reach out. Um, I'll, I'll make my email available. Uh, I also have the Slack invite um, available in these slides and we'll be sending them out shortly to everyone. So please feel free to jump on there and collaborate with anyone and everyone that wants to participate. You're all welcome. Everyone's part of the community. Um, as far as community projects that are coming up, um, I think that we do have a handful of those. So I know that uh, Around AFITC, there are a handful of events. Um, I can pass it over to uh, Sharice if she would like to talk a little about those, but I know that Innovate AFITC is coming up. AFITC as a whole is coming up. I know that MGM Works has a coding sprint coming up from my understanding. So those are all coming down the pipe and I hope Hack MGM will be involved extensively with those. And in, in the interim, yes, I'm really excited about doing more support, uh, supported community projects and I really enjoy doing those things. Um, I think that that offers us an opportunity to come together as a community and continue to collaborate on solutions that, that have impact to individuals around us. We do have the ability to bring in some of our esports component in with also our software development and network administration side of the house. So you'll see that within Innovate AFITC, but you'll also see other events that we've had, just like the uh, Camp IT, those events that could be virtual and other partnerships that we'll have with local school districts, as well as um, working with the collegiate side of the house in advanced higher education, and then also bringing in some of the short-term certificates. Those of you that are looking for agile and DevSecOps training, but then also the opportunity to do projects and internships with local companies. Fantastic, thank you. Um, I know that we also, uh, one of the previous projects that we had helped out on uh, a couple months back was the, uh, the COVID-19 um, resources page. So we, we helped build that out and that should be accessible through the, uh, the city data portal. So we, we certainly try to target things that are meaningful to the community and ways that we can continue to engage and provide value to everyone involved things that are meaningful to, to both the community as a whole and the Hack and GM community. Uh, more thoughts on community projects and how those can be supported by Hack and GM. All right, I'm gonna go on to how, how do we break down that work and what does that, what does that mean? So the idea of targeting these very small things uh, yeah, let's roll back to that question. Um, what about side projects for other organizations? Uh, would you like to give a few more details on that? Any, any examples? Okay, um, I'm gonna go back to uh, breaking down work. 
So, so yes, uh, talking about um, like working items for the Department of Health or COVID operations and logistics, things of that nature as community projects that can be supported by Hack MGM. I think this kind of goes back to what I was talking about earlier in the presentation, whenever I was saying things that had gone well versus things that didn't go well. Uh, in the past, Hack MGM had tried to pick up projects and run them as the, uh, the owning organization. And that didn't work. Um, as well as we would have liked. The volunteers that were involved didn't end up um, have, having availability or having ownership or even, even would be worried about participating because it would provide too much um, commitment for, for them to participate in those things. So as far as running projects, I, I think that that's one of the things we're going to try to stop doing. Um, I don't want us to run projects anymore, but as far as supporting projects, we certainly can and we can continue to provide um, any skill sets that we have to offer uh, there, whether that's development skill sets. So if there's a small enough task that we can proceed forward on in a mob programming session, I'd love to tackle that with the entire team. Um, or if there are individuals that want to talk about things that they have in their community, for instance, COVID operations and logistics or items for the Department of Health, if they want to present those to the Hack MGM group, that would be wonderful. Um, we would look forward to, to collaborating on this and seeing how we could be of assistance, seeing how we could help guide or uh, shape or learn um, with these groups. Which I think ties in really well to, uh, to how to break down the work. Um, whenever we look at these larger projects, uh, you really do want to try to find things that are consumable. Um, you, you want to be able to, uh, to break down the overall work into small bite-sized pieces so that you can proceed forward. The biggest, for, the biggest portion of that in my mind is to also make sure that the, the piece that you are building does have value um, after you've completed it. So it must have value to the end user for it to have been useful. Otherwise you are, um, uh, otherwise you are, you are building it too wide and what you end up with is a lot of work that doesn't result in fast value. So, so I think that ideally we are trying to find those small vertical slices of functionality that can be executed on in small sessions with the entire group or individuals that are willing to pick up execution on tasks as they proceed forward and what those look like. So I know that one of the ways that we are also uh, proceeding forward with engagement on community projects is through, through outside in industry and how we can continue to coordinate with those. Uh, I, know, I know that uh, the, the, the uh, company that I'm with, Fearless, is very happy to come in and participate in many of these events. I know that I've had many coworkers already express interest in, uh, in attending these. They're quite excited that we're going to be doing so many of them virtually to start since they are mostly located out of Baltimore. So I know that in that regard, we will be continuing to have conversations with everybody, uh, both um, industry locally, as well as the government, the DOD, as well as um, the education institutions and, uh, and, and everybody involved in the local communities. So I think that that'll offer a lot of really great cross functionality and how we can proceed forward. Um, another thing that uh, I, I'm seeing in chat is that is there cross functionality even beyond people that would traditionally be considered uh, software development uh, shops? And I think there certainly is. Um, I, I would love to engage with various other industries in the communities um, and different uh, civic organizations and how they proceed forward to help solve their problems um, and to offer them tech solutions toward these problems or to at least help collaborate with them on coming up with what is a, what is a reasonable solution considering tech as well. So I'm certainly open to having Anyone and everyone that wants to attend any of our uh, any of our events, please do so. Um, if you are attending the event, you are a techie. You you've you've decided to become one, and that's wonderful. Um, you don't have to be a great programmer. You don't have to be a great designer. That's that's not the expectation. It's not that you will be wonderful whenever you walk in the door. No one is, and everyone will continue to learn. What makes you a good programmer or a good designer isn't that you can execute very well to start, it's that you continue to improve. 
Um, any questions on how to break down work? All right, then I'm gonna give us about 15 minutes for just generic uh, Q&A to wrap this up, see if there's anything else that anybody has. If there's nothing, then I can pass it back to the chamber, to Charisse, and we can go from there. Thanks a lot, Brian. Um, I appreciate you, one, for uh, speaking on HackMGM. Uh, having HackMGM actually to relaunch is, is an awesome thing for all of us and for the entire community. As we continue to talk about just the variety of things that we can do from a technical perspective in Montgomery, this gives us an additional opportunity to bring everyone to the table. Everyone that's considered themselves to be a software developer, programmer, very technical, but then those that are just concerned and really passionate about the Montgomery community. As we've gone to virtual operations, there's a lot more of a focus on not just technology, but then also how do we reach people that may not have had technology at their fingertips like we have. But we also have an opportunity now with civic hacking and with our virtual operations to tackle a lot of the problems and a lot of the challenges that we have in Montgomery. Things like a digital divide, uh, things like even logistics and COVID operations, how we're handling medical, education, and other opportunities across Montgomery. So using not only agile software development principles, but more technical-based principles to solve some of our community problems and challenges is definitely not only a way of the future, but something that's certainly very successful in other organizations and cities and something that we see will be successful in Montgomery. So one, appreciate you, Brian. We look forward to what you'll be able to do with HackMGM, and we look forward to being able to participate in the future. For those of you that um, didn't have an opportunity to attend any of the webinars that we had previously, uh, this is our sixth webinar, and all of them are actually posted on YouTube on the Chamber site, and you're welcome to go back and take a look at some of the past webinars and sessions that we've had. And then also look forward to some new sessions that we'll have over the coming months as we continue to operate not only virtually, but then trying to make sure that we're networking within the entire tech community in Montgomery. So one, thank you for attending today. Appreciate your support throughout this last month and a half as we've done our Tech MGM webinars. And we look forward to working with you the remainder of the summer and the remainder of the year in building the tech ecosystem in Montgomery. Have a great afternoon and have a wonderful week. Stay safe.